Welcome back to another episode of the Journey Home Podcast. This is episode 42. And today, today is going to be a very, uh, I have some very selfish, curious, personal questions. But it's about a topic that everyone can relate to. Um, today, I have with me in the studio a entrepreneur, a son, a brother, a husband-to-be, and someone who's very well versed in the health and fitness industry um and so and he's also quite diverse in his in his background um so he was someone who was born in the UK lived in Egypt lived in Qatar and so with all of that being said welcome to the show thank you Mr. Abada OB yes, start sir. with the first question which is the same for everyone what is your earliest memory? I got two. Okay. One involving my mum, one involving my dad. Okay. So the one involving my mum was every week I'd run home knowing if I was a good boy, my mum would leave me a magazine, Pokemon card, or I was an overweight kid, I liked eating, so or a bag of chocolates and sweets in my cupboard. You were an overweight kid. I was a big kid, yeah. Wow. I was overweight. I used to overeat all of that. So I'd run home, coming to get my snacks. And that's that's the memory <laughs> of my mum. Okay. My dad would be in the summer holidays. He used to take me every day to work with him. Mm-hmm. Would walk through the park. So my mum would feed me. My dad would be like, "No. Take me walk through the park for like 45 minutes to go to work with him cuz all the other we called them ambles. All the other uncles would bring yep. their boys in the summer. Yep. And we used to play all day. We used to get little one pounds here and there to go and buy chicken and chips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, those are my two memories of being a kid. Wow. What was growing up like in uh, in Easton? Alhamdulillah, it's decent. Like, obviously, there's so many different areas in the UK. Mm. Before Neasden, we lived in the council estates, which was made, you could say it was a bit rough. Mm-hmm. My dad always tried to make sure, though, that he kept us away from, you know, like, the bad. Mm-hmm. So growing up, this is why we came to Qatar. Mm. He tried to keep us away. He tried to uh, educate us on our religion and culture. Mm-hmm. Tried to keep that in the house. Tried to keep us away from, you know, in the UK, a lot of madness happened yeah, yeah, growing yeah. up. So, yeah, I can't say that I grew up doing any of that stuff. I was around a bit of it. But, um, alhamdulillah, my dad tried to make sure that, you know, we were... We were kept within our culture and religion okay. to stay away from getting into did that stuff. did that involve a lot of discipline but yeah my dad was strict but he, he was also soft and nice mm. he was strict in a way of like you know do your prayers yeah, yeah, yeah don't yeah, do yeah. this this is bad this is uh, good and obviously when i was a teenager and growing up i probably thought or felt that it was uh, very strict and too much but looking back now the certain habits i have right now um, that I could say it's because of my dad's yeah. like praying. Yeah, and that's 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 kind of why I asked the question because yeah. a lot of times when you're in a when you're in an environment where it's prone to kind of leading you down the wrong route, yeah. it's very it's a hard balance between disciplining the child, yeah. which could in a way lead to be them being a rebel, pushed them the opposite then, way, exactly, yeah. or finding that balance in which I'm actually going to like educate you enough so that when you go outside, you know how to act and you know, like, you know, what's right, what's wrong. That's what it is. And you know what? The thing with my dad is one thing he did do was a lot of the times. Yeah. He seemed like he was strict a lot of the time, but a lot of the times when I was doing something wrong, he would sit me down. And back then when when he'd sit with me and my brothers would be watching me, they'd look at me and smile. I'd be like, Oh, I'll need to look at my watch. (laughs) Baba's going to sit me here for an hour now. And I'll get like a lecture. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. wasn't like an Islamic lecture. It was a lecture of why what you're doing is wrong and the process of what this might lead to and yes. what that might, the consequences. consequences. Yep. So it wouldn't be like why it's haram. It would be the, you know, like in our religion as well, not to be all religious and preachy, yeah. but there's a, I said this to my, I say this to my wife and everyone, like there's a reason behind every rule that's written in our religion. And if you put religion aside and you look at the rules and the reasons why we're not supposed to do things, it has legit health reasons, safety reasons, and just 
mental, reasons mental why. Mental well-being. Mental well-being. Yeah, There's yeah, a reason and, behind it. And at the core, I think it's just right and wrong. Right and wrong. 100%. Because like, people like to label it with religion, but no. But I got to say, my dad, alhamdulillah, like, he yeah. definitely made sure the way he did it. Looking at myself today, sometimes I do things and I'm like, how do I do this? Or why am mm. I doing this? And then I'm like, oh, because my dad used to do that. Mm. But what about from like a... Like a cultural perspective, because yeah, your yeah. your dad's Egyptian. My dad's Egyptian, right? and so growing up in the UK, you might lose that that sense of culture. culture yeah, right. So what what was that part like? <sighs> so that's where I always joke when people ask me about me, and I say I'm bit <laughs> uh, I'm bit I'm, I'm I'm a bit of everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My mom's English, pure English. My dad's Egyptian. Mm. Two opposite cultures. Uh, my dad is very Egyptian and re- and he's religious. Mm. Uh, my mom, alhamdulillah, she's Muslim too, but she's very English. Mm. So growing up in the UK and then taking it to here and wherever I go in the world is when you're around English, like when you're around English people, mm-hmm. right? Inside you're like, yeah, I'm a part of that. But then culturally, uh, put Egyptian aside, like a lot of my upbringing was more Islamic, so it wasn't like Egyptian. I don't really have much of an Egyptian personality. Right. I know Egypt, but I'm not fully Egyptian. But then the culture of the UK doesn't fit with the culture of the religion. Right, of course. It's the complete opposite. Yep. So I'll be around English people, but I'm not English. Yep. I'm not English enough because I don't drink. Uh, I'm not into certain things. It's not what I do. So you're not English. Mm. Certain other things. And then when I'm around the Egyptian people... My nickname in university from the Egyptians was Khawaja. Oh, wow. They call me Khawaja, yeah, the yeah, foreigner. Yeah, 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 yeah. So to the Egyptians, I'm not Egyptian either. Yikes. Yeah. So it's like, what am I? And then that's what makes it unique. Though. When did you realize this is what makes me unique, though? When I think it happen? was when I was in Qatar mm. later in life. Because, you know, in the UK and London, everybody's just London. You have the Arabs, you have the Asians, you have the English, you have... Um, you know, different backgrounds, the Latinos, the African brothers and sisters, and everyone's from London, though, yeah, yeah, accepting. Yeah, yeah. So everyone understands each other's backgrounds. Yep. So um, it's like, like a melting pot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like everyone's from London. But then obviously, if I go to where my mom's from, it's very English. Mm. This is where I'm an outsider. Mm. Even now, when I visit my grandfather in his little neighborhood, it's a lot of ex military older men, mm. they all look out the window when I'm walking down the road. Like who's this, who's this guy? Here. He doesn't look like he's English, but he's walking with uh, Michael. That's my grandpa's name. He's walking with Michael. So who's this young man? Um, so people come out and they're wondering. So you end up being very different. But then living in Qatar, the identity crisis it hits harder live, growing up in Qatar. How so? Because one of the first questions you're asked growing up in the Middle East, you know what the question is, Come right? Where are you, Where are you from? from? People were asked first of all where you're from, and then according to what your response is, that's where the they'll put you in a box. Treatment. That's where the treatment yep. will be chosen. What I'm gonna treat this person like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had like growing up here, I had situations. When mm-hmm. I'm Egyptian, it might be one treatment. When I'm English, it's another treatment. But then also growing up here because you have an expat community. And you have the Arabic community. And then growing up, you're kept within these communities. So you have the expats, the very mm. Westerners. And then you have the Arabic side of things growing up too. So you end up with a bigger identity crisis living away from your home country in another country that isn't either of your it's countries of, yep, yep, with yep. a bunch of other people, a bunch of other people from different <laughs> backgrounds and countries too. Yep. So it becomes a bigger thing where you're from. Yeah. So you end up becoming more lost as a child and teenager. Hundred percent. Living. I mean, you grew up in. I grew um, up in the UAE. In the UAE too. Yeah, so yeah, you don't yeah, understand, yeah. like you. Hundred percent. But then yeah, it's, it's mad. But at the same time, at the same time, it's kind of like now. Obviously, at, at like like a later stage, you realize you look back and you're like, the idea that the my, my ability to have grown up with someone from, uh, like. China, yeah. Australia, UK, Jamaica, blah, 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 blah. Ten different countries. Like, yeah. you're in a class of 15 students from ten different countries. Now, 
you realize that if it wasn't for that, you wouldn't be able to deal with like a lot of the people that you meet on a day to day basis, a lot of the different interactions you have on a day to day basis. I agree. But back then, it's like, damn. None what of us, am I? Like, like I don't. What fit am in. I? Who's like yeah. my people? Because yeah. you're always trying to find like your people the or belonging. like belong. Sense or, of belonging. Yeah, that's what it is. When you reach that age, like that age when I realize that it's a power, is I don't know specifically how old. Probably after university when I got into the fitness thing bigger. Mm. What age did you move to Qatar again? I was here. I came here for year seven. So okay, so that's so like that twelve, been ten, probably eleven, twelve. I've been here like 20 what? years, so I would have been 11. maybe a bit longer. So I would have been maybe 12 to 14, okay. around them ages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Or going into teenage years. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, formidable years. Like Yeah. So when you do look back now, yeah. what did spending those years in Qatar help with? Or hurt with? I'll tell you. I don't think this is to do with Qatar, though. Maybe a part of it is uh, what, you know, had to do with it. Is I always like to say... Growing up here has made me turn into a chameleon. Mm. I could camouflage and be around anyone in the world and they'll be comfortable and enjoy my presence. Yeah, you know, I could get along with anyone in the world. And then growing up here, I think, because I grew up on like all the things we were talking about identity here for, for you know, being an expat, but being a bit of everything and belonging or not, it's um, created a sense of uniqueness of me you know, being a character, an individual yeah, 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 yeah. that has two backgrounds, yep. that can understand both backgrounds. And but that then can also understand all these other backgrounds. That then can understand anything because yeah, I yeah, always yeah. say like, I could go any, I've traveled, you know, to numerous amount of countries and anywhere I go, I'll mingle with the people, not the people that are in the tourist area speaking English. I'll go the to locals. the neighborhoods. Yeah, yeah like yeah, when yeah, I lived yeah. in Egypt, I went into the, like I lived... I went to school with, you know, what you might call, um, you know, well-off peop- guys like going to international English schools. I was taking the local buses, though, and I was chilling in the bus stations with the so what macro buses, the, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, the bus yeah, drivers. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I loved it. And I, yeah. could, I could fit in with them and they liked me and I was jamming with them, you know, part yeah, of the yeah. day. And then I go back later on to the nice area and be yeah. around those people you too. Fit in with them too. Yeah, a light light bulb that kind of lit up for me was all these different. Everyone from a different country. All these borders, yeah. right? The borders on the map. That's all. That was all decided by some someone exactly. back in the day. Is right? it, it just at the divided. end of the day? At the end of the day, every, we're all just humans. That's we're all what just it out is. Here. And you know, like if we look into it as well, like it says. It even says in, in, in our religion that we created you amongst different tribes and people to mm-hmm. get along and get to know each other. Yep. So these borders were created by, we don't need to get political, but yeah, exactly. to, I didn't to, to, get to create deep, that. But, but, yeah. but like the world has been made for us to see how other people live. Yeah. The reason why, so I always use this example, you know this whole identity thing too. The only mm. reason it exists is people with one background live within a certain neighborhood, a certain area, um, like we always talk about in the UK, like people, um, like my grandpa, I'll use this example, when he came out here the first time, he got off the aeroplane and he was like, oh, wow, where the camels at? He was like, wow, you guys have real, like <laughs> yeah, yeah, buildings yeah, yeah. and cars and yeah, nice cars. Yeah. Like, because he lives in an, an area full of English people only. Yeah, yeah. They go to the pub. Yep. They, they 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 live a very English way. That's all you see it's growing up. It's your life. box. Yep. All you know is English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you go out of England, everything's different. Have you ever heard English people going on holiday going, why does no one speak English here in a country that language isn't English? I've heard a number of people like have, jo- yeah, joking about do. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a number of people joke about it. They were like, no one speaks English here. Yeah. And they're upset. Because I'm like, yeah, it's a foreign country. You're meant to be out there learning, <laughs> you know, but it's because you're in a box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it doesn't allow your mind to be open to learning experiences and backgrounds and how people live, um, what people live off. Like going to certain countries, and I've met people that are living, let's say, a more simple life with no money. Mm. Happiest people I've met in the world. 100%. But if I wasn't open to this experience, yeah, yeah, yeah. All I think is existing is my world There's no other culture, no other country Which is why now 
um, when people see and have friends from abroad from Arabic countries and those ones, people are becoming more aware of certain things, mm. you know, politically. Because mm-hmm. they lived in their own uh, communities and backgrounds and where they're from, mm. it's not their fault that they were miseducated on certain things, let's say. It's what but they know. It's all they know. It's all they know. So we can't blame people for that. Yeah. But this is the beauty of having two backgrounds, yeah, traveling yeah. the world, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, growing yeah. up in a third country that's not my, not either of my countries. Is yeah. I've seen a lot that I wouldn't have seen if I just lived in the UK. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, completely agree. I love that. Love, love, love that. When do you go to Egypt? Funny story though. So this is how I got to Egypt though. So that summer I went to Egypt for the first time since I was like a toddler. Maybe mm. I went to Egypt. It was a complete opposite. I was, you know, chubby. They love chubby kids in Egypt. They like, they like the little, little cheeks to. Uh, I was chubby. I was to them. I was English mm. with an Egyptian father. The people in Egypt gave me the grand welcome, and I felt like a wow. king, like a, a prince. I loved it. Al Khawaja. The Khawaja hit Egypt. <laughs> hit Ard al Umm al Dunya. Umm al Dunya. Ard Ard Masr. The people show me a lot of love there. Mm. And I liked the attention then When I was young I was yeah. like Okay I came from a year Of being the kid That's getting bullied that Getting into fights all the time Because I'm new I'm foreign I'm overweight I liked it in Egypt I was like People like me mm. So I I stayed there with my auntie For one year Two years sorry Year eight and nine mm. um, Studied there Learned Arabic there That's the first time I lost weight Why did you lose weight? So this is the beginning of my journey with fitness. Mm. I was in Egypt. Everyone was going to, they called the uh, doctora, what they called the, the, the nutritionist, the doctora. Okay. Nutritionist isn't a doctora. Doctoras go to uni and they study to become yeah, yeah, a doctor. Yeah, 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 yeah. In Egypt, they call it a doctor. You okay, know, it's fine. Egypt. Yeah, yeah. So, doctora. <laughs> okay. And she had them starving on like a tin of tuna, a piece of bread, some salad a day. Wow. So, I got into the habit of uh, trying Year to, eight, year nine. I was in year eight now, yeah. Wow. So I got into the habit of trying it with them because it was like a trend to lose weight there. And then as a kid, um, I was like, oh, the less I eat, the more I'm losing. So I thought, cool, I'm going to eat nothing. So I started starving myself. Some days I remember I'd be on a diet Pepsi from morning until night and then I'd have one chicken breast and some salad and go sleep. And then, so you could say I was anorexic. But yeah, I was very active in Egypt. And this is where, though, when I got into it... Into um, the diet, you mean? Into yeah, this, yeah, uh, yeah. I was thing. starving myself and moving a lot. So I became extremely skinny within wow. a year or two. And then uh, I was bulimic. I made myself sick if I ate something Oof. that I didn't... Um, if I ate something that was more than I thought was uh, good for me, I'd make myself sick. Um, no one educated me. Damn. And I thought that was okay. And my parents weren't with me either. But this is where the worry came with my family when they used to see me. Mm. And they started realising what's going on. Mm. Um, but yeah, this was in Egypt. And then I got into the gym in Egypt. But I still wasn't eating. Mm. It's just a very unhealthy dieting culture in Egypt. Yeah. Of eating little. Was there ever like a mental side to this kid that was overweight? Was there any like lack of confidence? Was there any mm. self-esteem issues? Were there any things of that nature? The thing is, when I got to Egypt, it wasn't because I was loving the attention. So why would you go into such a hardcore diet and yeah. like make, make like make yourself puke and all these extreme uh, yeah, extreme yeah, yeah, yeah. things? I think back then, because it was a trend, and my family were doing it, I started doing it. But they were actually eating a bit. Mm. But then nobody knew that I wasn't eating. I just come end of the week, and you know, like. Arabs are like, oh, and the khasis, you've yeah, lost yeah, some weight, yeah, man. You're yeah, looking yeah. good. But now being a fitness professional, I understand losing weight is not healthy if it's just muscle and everything. Yep. You know, you don't want to lose weight. You want to lose body fat and gain body muscle. Fat. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but back then, no one taught me this. And they mm. weren't informed either. They didn't know. They were just doing the same. And then they'll have a blowout on the weekend and overeat. And the doctor was telling them to do this. Mm. Have a treat day. The whole day. Go and eat whatever you like. So um, I think it gave me something that, Gave me like a first goal and target, even though it was wrong. What was that? Uh, like losing weight. But then that became a very unhealthy relationship, not just with food, but with myself. Because mm. if I wasn't losing weight weekly, I felt bad about myself. So I started 
from this up until the beginning of the gym, which like when we get into like how I got into gym and eating well, um, the body image. I don't care how big and bad half the guys out there are. Men have body image mm. issues too. Mm. You know, a lot of people just say, no, no, no. It's not. Men have body uh, image issues. No matter whatever you are, whether you're underweight, overweight, gym guys that are muscular and big, they a lot of them have, have unhealthy relationships with how they look in the mirror. Yeah, yeah. And even when you're looking healthy and you are healthy, a lot of people... Don't think they look like that. Mm. So this is where that relationship and uh, those issues came living in Egypt when I was losing all the weight. Mm. And then it directly became, I feel good if I'm losing weight. I feel unhealthy and overweight and crappy about myself if I'm not. But it sounds like there's this pressure coming yeah. from somewhere. Yeah. Where is, what's this pressure? Where is it coming from? It may have indirectly been bothering me. But as far as I remember, I was... You know, I was a funny kid. I was an overweight <laughs> funny kid, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like we were saying, like maybe that's why I was so funny. I'm still funny though. <laughs> Anyone that knows me, I'm still funny. I'm still funny. No, but but maybe no. I mean, I'm not. I'm not here. Like, yeah. I'm not trying to like decipher this whole situation. I'm just like, I'm just uh, in curiosity more than anything. Yeah. Like, why would you make such a dramatic change? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't actually remember how it got started. All I remember it was everyone was doing these diets. Mm. I jumped on the wagon. I don't know if someone in maybe it's just seeing everyone it. around you do it. I, guess. I, thi- I think you know what. Before I was into fitness as well, I was easily influenced, mm. which is why one of the reasons we came out here to the mm. Qatar. Mm-hmm. I was easily influenced, and the go- going the way I was going, I would have been influenced by the wrong kind of people if I mm. stayed in London, mm. and it was going to get to that if I stayed. Um, so I was very easily influenced And obviously Having the first ever family environment I had in my life Because my mum's family We weren't really connected we, like, We're not connected I never had family in the UK Outside of my home Right um, Egypt was the first time I had family I think that's a, the nature of the cultures too Yeah So like in, in, in the UK I think everyone's just kind of hustle bustle Everyone does their thing. Their own, their thing Everyone yeah, does yeah, their yeah. thing And obviously my mum became Muslim When I was I was born when she married my dad mm, mm. And um, Her family weren't really there Like they weren't with the whole religion thing Right So um, That was the first family experience I ever had mm. In Egypt so mm. I felt like I belonged I have family They love me Yeah 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 and I felt it's a sense of deal. love Yeah So maybe that's why Maybe because they were all doing it And they were the family They took me in I felt like I belonged there I felt loved in Egypt In general Probably That's it I was just Trying to do what they're doing Because mm. This was my life These people are like It's my family now And then Obviously along the way It became an obsession And it became Unhealthy And then the bad habits Came with eating The bad habits came with A lot of stuff mm. um, And it wasn't until I came back to Qatar That A few years later mm. That I got into it properly again I was doing good in Egypt With my academics And then I was getting Into the wrong stuff in Egypt Okay um, you know, I was fighting in Egypt sometimes. My auntie was getting called into school a lot. Mm. They were calling her, telling her I'm up to you know no good. And then she started getting upset because she's like, "Your dad trusted you with me, mm. um, and you're out here doing this, this, and that." Mm. I was good at hiding there. I was coming back to Qatar to visit my family. I'm like, "Yeah, Baba, look at my grades." <laughs> um, he was happy with me. He was like, "Mashallah!" Like my son's like on it with his studies yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when things got a bit too much in Egypt, and a few things I was out there doing almost. Getting caught on to mm. I was like It's time for me to come time home to So back. I hit my family like, They're gonna watch this Nah they might not watch this <laughs> Let's hope my dad's not on Instagram He's gonna be He's gonna know the truth now and Listen I'm 31 now man Time for it's the time. truth to come out It's time for the truth time. I can't live this lie any longer <laughs> <laughs> That's when I hit them with uh, uh, I miss you guys I wanna come back And live with you guys in Qatar mm. Reality was I was scared that I was gonna get caught On a few oh, things wow. in Egypt And mm. it was time for me to come home Before I get caught And then I'm not you know, good boy, no good son anymore. So yeah, 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 came back yeah. to Qatar. But yeah, I mean, that's that's the first dieting experience I had mm. in Egypt. What did you go to uni for? Uh, what did I study? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I studied marketing management. So I majored in marketing, okay. uh, the business. That's very, very far from what you ended up working in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, like, here's the thing. I I didn't know what I wanted to be. Mm. You know, you ask kid, what do you mean when you're older? I didn't know. Right. I had no interests. I didn't know what I was going to be. Didn't know what I wanted to be. 
um, you know, I wasn't interested in a lot of things when I was growing up. So how did you find health and fitness? So yeah, so basically, high school, I started going gym with some guys from school. We were just going in there, lifting weights, everything wrong and incorrectly. Uh, you know, having cigarettes pre-workout with coffee and, you know, like high school. <laughs> yeah. um, it was cool. That's, that you know. sounds horrible. It was cool. <laughs> pre-workout, we thought it was cool. We had cigarette, coffee, go hit the workout, have a cigarette after the gym, go out, drive around Doha. You know, high school things you do yeah, in Doha, yeah. right? Drive yeah, around, yeah. have karak and smoke cigarettes. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's what the cool boys do, eh? That's what the cool boys do in high school here, yeah. <laughs> All these boys that got me into the gym, it was like a, a, a one-year... Thing for them, they, mm. they just you know, like it's universe, high school, you know, it's, it's a trend, cool. it's a trend yeah, for yeah, them. Yeah. They got into it and they left. Mm. Now, this is why, like, going back, we were saying about the sense of belonging. Mm. I feel like I think since I was younger, I was always looking to belong somewhere because mm-hmm. I was lost, mm. identity thing, mm-hmm. crisis. So, I was always lost. Now, when they got me into the gym, I didn't know this was going to become the place at that time that I belonged. Wow. So, I, so as I started going to the gym, the feeling I got when I was working out, it was another target, like the one in Egypt, which was wrong. This time going to the gym, seeing my body change, seeing the, the muscle, um, not just the muscle, sorry, the the numbers on whatever exercises increasing, getting recognition off of people for my progression, mm. um, it gave me, I just got hooked on it and it started growing me physically which I didn't know later on was going to grow me mentally, majorly. What was that feeling? It was obviously the the growth, the the physical changes yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. That's great. But where did the sense of belonging come from? So sense of belonging, I don't know how I can explain it, but... Is it that you built your own world that you were comfortable in? That was a world, was? yeah. That, that became my world. Yeah. Uh, that time I go gym, I'll be waiting all day to go there. Like, I'm, I'm excited to work out. Yeah. And that hour or two I'm in the gym My neighbours own the gym It was one of the first gyms in Qatar My neighbours, they were bodybuilders mm. And I see them And then these bigger dudes, you know, they come up And, you know, little little high school boy I thought I was a big man then But looking back now, I was a kid to them um, And they're like little fist bump and Like, mashallah, you know, you're doing this, you're doing that And there's word they used to say in the gym um, Mastui Stewie. Like you're cooking. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you're cooking, your body's sizzling. <laughs> you know? Sounds wrong, but yeah, it didn't mean yeah, it that yeah. way. But yeah, back then, that was like that one or two hours when you're in the gym working on yourself. You know, you're doing your reps, you're doing your sets, you're getting stronger. And then over the time, um, I started seeing my body grow mm. in terms of muscle, body fat was going down. Um, and over the time of seeing my physical progression, I'm getting stronger physically. This, it became my identity back then, which later on in life, up until recently, became something I didn't like, being labelled the gym guy. Because mm. now, I'm a, I'm more than just the gym guy now. There's a okay. lot more behind the the lifestyle and the body people might look at it as. There was yeah. a point in my life, I was the gym guy. I was the guy with the body, the guy that people come because you want to yeah. train and be like you. At one point, no, I don't know. It didn't bother me, but at one point I was like, you know what? I'm more than just a body. Yeah, And this is why like, I started getting into education I started getting into like ment- I mentor a lot of people Even mm. if I don't charge them for it mm-hmm. like, I should be charging for it mm. like, You know because <laughs> it's, it's, it's a career But yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mentored people man People come to me for more than just training now mm. And um, This is where it all started Yeah, Because me seeing Myself change and how good I felt About myself as I got stronger Physically now knowing when you exercise, you release endorphins, your happy hormone. 100%. I felt amazing. And yep. I got stronger. I got bigger. I got fitter. Mm. And as I did this, later on in life, now looking at it, it develops certain habits and a mindset um, where now I know anything I do consistently um, in little bits. It doesn't have to be extreme. Little bits of action done consistently over a long period of time will yield results. Will build you into results. Mm, crazy. And then I became, uh, you know, professionally certified mm. when I graduated. Where did you do that? 
uh, with where I'm working now, the IFA. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, so I met the owner of IFA when I was graduating. Mm. I had my uni internship for marketing to do. So he was like, why don't you come along and do your internship at IFA? So that one year I worked with the, um, you know, the International Fitness Alliance yep. after uni. And then I went and worked in a gym for one year. Mm. Um, you know, I enjoyed it more than being in the office back then. Um, I was starting to grow a good uh, base of people that want to work with me. Mm. And then I got offered a job in one of the gyms out here, one of the original gyms out here, um, Q Gym. I actually wanted to take some time to dive into this health and fitness topic a bit further. Yeah, of course. I've had a big issue with health and fitness. Okay. Honestly. Like, Tell me. I moved here in 2016 and I was 75 kg. Okay. Right? Um, seven years down the line, I've gained 35 kilos Okay. for a grand total of 110. And I have a very yo-yo diet. Can't seem to build consistency with the gym. Okay. It's just been a very long and annoying and difficult road. Yeah. Right? I understand. So okay. why is it, number one, why is it? Why does it feel like it's such a tough mountain to climb? Okay. And what would you say to someone that's going through something similar to that? Okay. I'll say my first thing. Don't overwhelm yourself with thinking that you need to completely change your life right now. Okay. And the reason I say that, I do. This is, that's the thing. We think as humans and people is normal. Like this is where I'm different today to this younger me I was talking about. We think social media as well. A lot of things play an influence on us into thinking to reach a goal, health and physical state that we have to be living like monks. Mm -hmm. You know, you see these trainers out here mm -hmm. up at three in the morning. You know, eat healthy, eat clean, do this, do that. You have to train once or twice a day, every day. You honestly, bro, like, what is this to most people? Like, you know, you're a you're a working man. You're a man that has, you know, priorities in life. And you know, mm. the last thing you want to do is to overwhelm yourself with thinking you have to change yourself a hundred percent and eat, sleep, uh, breathe. You know, healthy food only, mm. training every day. A lot of us don't have time for that. Mm. Even me, like since obviously this year, um, you know, I done my little. I done. I mean, I done my nikah, so technically I'm married now. My brook. Allah barak fiq. Thank you. So it comes with a lot of new. I got new responsibilities. Hundred percent. I got new goals. There's another issue that I struggle with sometimes. Tell me. So I'll start like a week. I'll start super strong. Wake up. I'll have a good breakfast. Good healthy breakfast. I'll go to the gym. Yeah. Blah blah blah. Everything is great. Day three comes, my alarm, I miss my alarm. Yeah. Um, I wake up, go to work, uh, have a, depending on what time of the month it is, if it's uh, closer to the end of the month, I might have a very unhealthy lunch. Yeah. If it's, uh, if I got a little bit of money in the bank, I'll have yeah, a healthier lunch. <laughs> right. And then uh, I'll come back from work. Um, and literally, I've just had such a long day that all I want to do is sit on the couch and watch a Netflix show, or watch yeah. YouTube, whatever the case may be. Most likely, order some more unhealthy food yeah. for dinner, right? And then that day just kills my motivation for okay. the rest of the week. Yeah. Sometimes even for the rest of the month, sometimes for a few months, yeah. right? How do I stop myself from letting one day Mo like, her, like lock you off kill, kill the motivation yeah, okay. for the rest of the month or, the, okay. or like however long okay and this is another like when I was saying my mindset now is different than it used to when it comes to training and nutrition mm. allow yourself days where you have labelled unhealthy like I can allocate one cheat meal yeah that's fine but then I know I'm uh, other than that I've done everything great yeah. but the problem is I'll mess up when I'm supposed to not mess up okay and then that will kill my motivation or the consistency for the rest of that yeah. week or the rest of that month. That's the thing. But here's the thing with it. You've got to be more adi about it. Like if you've been on for three days and you weren't meant to eat something uh, on, mm. on day four, but it happened, right? Did you enjoy the meal? I'm sure. Yeah. Well, I, prob I probably enjoyed it in the moment. And then as soon as I finished it, I was like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. 
Here's one thing I like to say about life. Mm. Like, you can go with the food <laughs> thing as well, though. Did it happen already? Yeah. Is there anything we can do about it? No. The old me would have been like, I'm going to be sick, but that was the wrong way to go back. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. there's nothing we can do about it. It's happened. Yeah. But so how do I bounce back now? How do I make sure that it doesn't happen again and by the next morning? So how to I'm move forward is, number one, is in the moment when you feel guilty, Khalas, it happened. You enjoyed it. Khalas, man, that was, that was a banging meal, man. That was really nice. Yeah, yeah, Khalas, yeah. it's done. Rather than feeling guilty about it now because it's happened, you can't change that fact. You just, next day, you get back to it. So you don't let it go further. Because like you've gone up, up, up. One day you've gone here, you've been a bit naughty with food. You can either go down a bit and then carry on, or you can go here, feel bad, go here, and then you have to go back up again anyway. So you've wasted some time. Mm-hmm. How to make it, how to avoid it happening next time now mm. is this is my new way of, uh, you know, coaching and with my nutrition mm-hmm. is learning the contents of foods mm-hmm. when it comes to calories, protein, carbs, and fats. Some people say it's obsessive. Uh, everyone's entitled to opinion. End of the day, food is calories. It gives you function. You have protein, carbs, and fats. If you learn how to navigate through food and what consists of what, mm. and you're able to track and monitor your nutrition and your food in general, you can allow yourself to have labeled unhealthy foods. The end of the day, labeled unhealthy foods consist of what? Calories. It's calories. Yeah. They're not the best quality. It's going to, you know, mess up your digestive, your, your digestion up. Maybe you won't get good energy. You feel sluggish. Yeah, yeah, you'll yeah. feel cool. At the end of the day, it's calories though. Mm. So you won't get quality. But in terms of numbers, if you have a goal, it won't impact you as much if okay. you fitted it around what you need to be eating. Yeah, yeah. Now, this will allow you to have treats that aren't labeled healthy. End of the day, listen, man, I'm human. Now, when you're able to navigate and see at the end of the week what you had in numbers mm. and how you had what and, and what happened that week with your progress, mm. you're able to then look back at your data to see where you maybe went wrong or where you went right mm. and make adjustments to carry on progressing. Now, the thing with a calorie tracking, you don't have to do it forever. I don't do it now. It becomes second nature, I guess. Exactly. In the beginning... Yes, it's a bit of work. It will help you understand, though, what different foods consist of what um, content of calories, which is, you know what a calorie is for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's energy. Energy, it's yeah, the, yeah, It's the measuring unit of energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it helps us understand this chicken breast in this size or that size consists of whatever grams of protein. Yeah, yeah. So it allows you later on to know, let's, let's be honest, People don't know how to control their food. Mo- no, yes. There's two well, types of people. There's, well, there's, I agree that people yeah. don't know how to control their food. But like, for example, speaking on my behalf, yeah. I sometimes don't know how to control, like self-control yeah. when I see food. Exactly. <laughs> That's what it is. But I mean, that could be one or two. Either, you know, it's just the control, like training the mind yeah, yeah, yeah. into knowing that it's okay for me to just have a normal meal and mm. move on with life and... You do not have to go overboard with it. Or number two is if you're not eating throughout the day and you're really... like People overeat either because, like, I've been the same. I just can't control, like, when there's food, I just need to eat and I need to finish it. Mm. Uh, some people, because they just don't eat all day, so they're really, really hungry. So then when they see something, they just go for it. But they could say, they could say that that's intermittent fasting. <laughs> so now, here's the thing with intermittent fasting. I've, done, I've, I've, I've intermittent fasted since I was in university. I didn't know what it was, though. I just have coffee all day. I'm lying. I have coffee and cigarettes all day. <laughs> this was university times before yeah, I became yeah, a trainer. Yeah, yeah. But I all day, I had no calories. Mm. I just wasn't hungry. So I'd fast up from 6 a.m. up until like afternoon-ish, 2, 3 p.m. maybe. So between my classes, end of the wow. day, before I go to the gym, yeah, I'd start yeah. working. But the thing is, I was never a breakfast person. I'm still not. I could function like that. Some people are hungry in the morning. I, I wake up starving every yeah. morning. In that case, intermittent fasting will probably lead you to, if you're forcing yourself to not eat for the sake of that, when you get to later on in the day, you're most likely going to overeat because you've been waiting all day and you've passed beyond the feeling of hunger True. and starving. True. If I, if I intermittent fast, I usually go 
for like, the later I stop eating earlier in the day like yeah. I'll stop okay. eating I can easily stop eating at 5 6 p.m. Okay easily. okay that's sweet and that's how I do when I do that works yeah okay. so that's the thing with the like, intermittent fasting too like look I say this with anything intermittent fasting the only reason it works is you have a small eating window mm. And in a small eating window, you're less likely to eat 5,000 calories in, say, six hours or whatever the window is mm. than if you wake up from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. and you're eating all day. Mm. So it shortens your eating window, which means you're probably going to eat less. So in terms of fat loss, it'll help you be below the calories you're burning. So you'll be in a calorie deficit. Mm. Um, do you have to? No. If it helps you, though, it's used as a tool to eat. So I'll be honest, right now, and uh, I, I'm, I'm enjoying this conversation because I'm literally relating it to yeah. like, things I'm doing in my life right now, right? So right now, today, yeah. I'm on a meal plan from one of these meal planning companies. The boxes? The boxes, Okay, right? The box that I have is 1,500 calories. Um, my BM, my what's it called? Uh, basal metabolic rate, which is how many calories I burn yeah. without... Uh, doing anything is 2,100, something mm. like that. I'm on a 1,500 calorie box. The interesting part is, unintentionally, I finish all five meals before 5, 6 p.m. Is it a lot of food or not? It's small portions, but it's five meals. But I, but I get hungry, so I eat the meals. <laughs> so I'll have breakfast. Two hours later, I'll have the snack. Yeah. An hour later, I'll have lunch. An hour later, I'll have a snack. An hour later, I'll have dinner. 5, 6 p.m., I'm done with all my meals. Now, here's a uh, thing. <laughs> 1,500 calories. That's very low. But I'm trying to stay in a deficit. Yeah, but you're a tall guy. My basal metabolic rate is 2,000 calories. 2,100. Ma- look, these machines, they, uh, they... No, I did the calculation. There's like a calculation for it, yeah. no? There's like an equation. There is, yeah. But 1,500 calories for a, a, a guy is low. You Go on. If you're hungry, okay, if you was hungry on what you're eating now, how long are you go- Are you eating things from outside the box? No. Uh, if I get super hungry, I'll make like a protein shake. Okay. 120 calories. Yeah, the thing is, when you're trying to... You know, be on a calorie deficit. The goal isn't to be hungry. If you're hungry, it's be it's being done wrong. But I'm trying to train myself not to want more. There's a difference between mentally just wanting to eat because, like, you can't control it, and then physically being hungry. Now, mm-hmm. right, us men, we hold on to you know more muscle mass. We're taller. We're a bit. You know, we're not all tall actually. So, uh, men in general, we 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 have higher testosterone. Mm. You know, generally speaking, we require more calories than females. Metabolism is a bit yeah. higher. Okay, and and you're going to gym sometimes now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. twice, yeah. three times a week. So, you're probably better off eating the calories you need, say, to maintain your weight, but then creating a deficit through movement and exercise. You'd be better off if you were eating 2,000... Okay, this is another way to look at it. If you were eating 2,100 calories a day, but on Friday you don't have to eat whatever, you know, and potentially overeat. Mm. If you ate 2,000 calories over seven days a week, whatever, my my maths is not Egyptian, so (laughs) multiply that by seven, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Compared to eating 1,516 a day, Okay, and then get into Friday and then just, you know, flopping on that one day. Yeah. You'll probably end up eating more than 2,000 calories on that day or 1,600 on that Friday too. on the Friday, So that's going to push you way over your weekly average of calories anyway. You think so? Yeah. If you end up overeating on that day. I'll have to eat like 6,000 calories on Friday to to get to my weekly average. But on Friday, so how many do you reckon you ate on that day? Because most people will binge eat on that one day. I know. I wouldn't say binge eat. In fact, like I, I uh, was it one meal. I'll say let's let's say this last Friday maybe two thousand five hundred. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. That's okay. But but two thousand five hundred. 
bad calories. Okay. I was assuming that you were binge eating on the Friday, so Not all day from no, morning no, to no, night. No, 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 no. Okay. Like, like that, that, but again, that's this these last Fridays where I'm actually like mentally on it. Yeah. But it might come a week where... This is a thing. But this is why I say, rather than being hungry every day and then fighting to the weekend, there's only so many weekends you're going to be able to take of it. What we want to go for, this is the thing. Well, this, I don't I don't like a lot of these meal prep companies. Like, no, some of them do legit give you good calories and good everything. But mm. if you're starting on very low calories, yes, it will give you weight loss. It will. Because you're eating less than you're moving. But right? here's here, here's the gag. Yeah. I haven't lost weight. <laughs> okay, let me explain something that I sometimes try to explain to people as well. By the yeah. way, I'm having this conversation to yeah. benefit everyone. Yeah. For like for anyone who's listening and yeah, trying yeah, yeah, and yeah. going through the same thing as well. So one thing I say to people when it comes to you trying to work out sometimes, right? And you're super low on calories. Yeah, because one five is very low. Mm. It is. I've had uh, ladies, um, you know, la- ladies generally require less calories than men. Okay, just like hormone, like we got more testosterone, and just the build is different. I've had ladies uh, on 1,800 calories mm. losing body fat. Now, the trick is trying to obviously work out and utilize your muscles. But then it's also making sure that your calories and how they're defi- divided, uh, the macros, your protein, carbs, and fats, are done in a fashion where you're getting enough protein for you know muscle to hold on to. Um, enough carbohydrates and fats to give you enough energy as well to get through the day because our main source of energy is carbs. Yep. Um, so we need enough to get through, and then your fats have its benefits for your health also. You know, helps you with um, uh, what do you call it? Digesting certain vitamins and minerals. It helps with a few other things in the body. Uh, we need all of them in moderation. Now, what happens is when we're exercising, working out, and moving. We're breaking down our muscle fibers. Mm. When we're eating enough calories from, you know, you know, good amounts of protein and the other stuff, it goes to your muscle fibers from you've been working out and breaking your muscle fibers down, which actually make them weaker. Now, your calories, your protein, and, you know, your macros, but your protein specifically, if you're eating enough, breaks down into aminos, which goes to your muscle fibers. They yep. rebuild themselves, come back together, bit stronger each time Mm -hmm. so muscle soreness Mm -hmm. is your muscles needing to recover recovers through adequate nutrition protein and total calories also Mm. okay carbohydrates we need enough for energy it holds uh you know glycogen in your muscles too which gives you energy also and it plays a big role in obviously having you know know, performance gains getting Mm. stronger you know being able to do more um what was that what was i trying to talk get to like uh, what was the question about the calories yeah, yeah okay so you cool. were telling me what i talk a lot i get lost in my words sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. so now what happens is uh you're recovering your muscles come back stronger a bit better than last time a bit bigger mm. right big doesn't mean bodybuilding yeah, yeah 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 you won't be like that unless you've been training for 10 years or eating a lot of calories and gaining Mm. No, it means you'll just, you know, your muscle will grow stronger, a bit bigger, which will give your body, you know, shape. Yes. Um, now, what happens now is because you've recovered and grown the muscle, assuming you're doing your steps and, you know, keeping your calories within range. So you're not saying to be high calorie, but not to be super low. Right. Like one five, somewhere, you know, mid range, like yeah, yeah. one nine, two thousand, let's right. say around your maintenance. Let's yeah, say. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, now, what's happening is because your muscles are getting stronger and bigger, you have a bigger machine. Mm-hmm. Now, your muscles need nutrition to maintain them as they get bigger, mm. which means your body will utilize the food you're eating better towards going to the muscle to hold on to that muscle, to mm. feed it. Which is why some people, you, I don't know if you've heard it when people say when you exercise, work out and grow muscle, um, your body becomes a fat burning machine They yes, say Yes 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 They mean it in the sense of The more muscle you hold on to Which will come from exercise And enough nutrition um, Not too much Just enough uh, Your muscles will grow Now when your muscles grow You have a bigger um, You know machine You have a higher car. metabolism Your metabolism And how you use your calories yep. 
will go towards feeding and fueling these muscles to continue maintaining them and to continue Strength recovering from the yeah. workouts. Mm. Which is why for bigger guys from the gym, I mean, like in muscle, um, I might eat 2,500 calories on a deficit. Because mm. oh, wow. I hold on to muscle. So the more muscle I hold on to, I require more calories to hold on to that muscle when I'm trying to cut body fat. Yeah. So I require more calories because I have a bigger machine because mm-hmm. I need to feed the machine to maintain the muscle on it. So this is why, like, for you to be able to, um, you know, consistently, and people are surprised sometimes when they think, let's like, say you're on one five. Yep. Say I tell you to eat 2,000 calories to make sure you're getting in, let's say, uh, is it 0.7 to one gram per pound? Per kilo, pound, yeah, yeah, per yeah. pound of body weight, yeah. Always getting confused with key yep. kilos and things, yeah, yeah. American and British. Yep. So per pound, right, mm-hmm. of, uh, say, lean weight or just weight, you know, to, and we could figure it out over yeah. time, of uh, protein. Protein. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, you could start, f- I, I usually go mid-range, so not on the higher level. That's like if you've been training for long and you hold on to a lot of muscle, um, the lower scale If that's low too If you're okay with eating pro- protein I'll go like say 0. 0.7, 0. 0.8 Okay so That's in between Okay Okay Now you're working out and eating this This is going to help towards Number one Protein is generally more filling Number two is Your muscles will utilise You know the protein will get broken down To help your muscles And other bodily functions too Yeah For recovery Um, And then you just divide The rest of those calories Over your carbs and fats um, say you're eating at you know the higher say one nine one uh, two thousand, uh, which is your maintenance anyway. Mm-hmm. But this is going to be fueling you to have good workouts and more energy to exercise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so in return, you're probably going to burn more calories because you're going to have more energy from this food to move more and do more. Mm. And in return of having more energy to do these things, number one, you have better energy in the day, so you have better days. Yeah. Number two, because you're burning and utilizing more because you have more fuel to to to, to, to function off. You're probably going to burn more calories, which mm. is going to put you in more of a deficit anyway. That's but you're going to do it feeling more strong, energetic. Because let's let's be honest, like if you're hungry most of the time, are you going to feel strong? Or are you going to feel like you know tired? And like no, you're going to be tired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're, you're going to be lethargic. And that's not the goal behind exercising no, no, no. and eating well. Our goal isn't so. Like, Even if it's subconsciously, actually, because. I guess when you eat enough and you're energized, you're going to be like, oh, I'm quite energized. Let me go out for a walk or let me go do something else. And this is where, let's bring up, okay, let's talk about fasted cardio. Mm -hmm. People say the classic cardio, mad the fadia, empty stomach, so you Mm. burn more fat. If you do it in the morning, well, yeah, there's some studies and that. It doesn't mean you directly burn fat though. So now the thing is, if you're doing cardio on an empty stomach and fasted, Mm -hmm. if you're hungry and you're walking and doing activity, Number one, you're probably going to do less because you're tired and you're hungry. Number two, because you're already hungry and you've done all of this, it's going to make you hungrier. Yep. So you're probably going to eat more anyway later. Whereas I would say, if you wake up hungry and you're tired, have breakfast and then go for a walk or do your cardio later. Yeah. What's going to happen is because I fueled my body with carbs and, and fuel, I'm probably going to have a better workout. A better workout yep. And having a better workout means I've used and utilized more muscle tissue I've probably burnt more calories because I've done more because I've eaten better. Mm. Remember I said earlier on, our goal is to have a stronger, better functioning body. Yep. Nutrition and food with exercise is the fuel that will give you a healthier, stronger body. Mm. Now, the my issue with a lot of these, um, you know, people that, you know, give boxes and food and stuff, right? I usually send my clients and tell them if they're getting it to tell the whoever to give them this amount of calories and protein, what they'll do is they'll have you on low calories. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, to make you think you're dieting. With some people, they'll lose weight on low calories. They'll lose muscle. They'll lose fat. They'll lose everything, which is bad. And it's like a quick fix kind of thing. Now, quick fix isn't a lifestyle. No, it's not sustainable. Let's say, let's say the one five worked for you. Right, you know, and you did it for three months. Yep. Let's say you lost, you know, ten kilos. Ten kilos over how many months? I say three. Yeah, that's okay. Let's say you lost ten kilos, but you were hungry every day. You just stuck with it. What happens when you come off these boxes? Overdose. <laughs> you're gonna oh, you're probably not gonna be able to. You won't 
go back to knowing how to eat properly for yourself. Yeah. You're probably going to go a bit wild for a bit. You're going to end up regaining, if not, so many people have lost weight doing quick fixes and, you know, extreme they diets. They regain the whole They thing. regain it and they gain extra. Because you've just created a worse habit than before. Yeah. We haven't created lifestyle habits. The goal is to create style, to create, sorry, habits that you can keep up for the rest of your life. Mm. It isn't a fix, I just want to look good. Mm. It's a fix of I want to do these habits to be healthier and stronger and all these things I said for the rest of my life. Yeah. But as a byproduct, your body will change. So it's never a quick fix. And this is why now I'd rather, I do three workouts a week. I try and watch my, my macros and my calories. Or like I just eyeball it now because I know how. Mm. I try and sleep well. It's a big factor. And I try and move more throughout my day to day. So what's the dream? For Obi, for me, inshallah, my dream is to obviously be able to have eventually the freedom, financial freedom. Uh, not financial freedom in the sense of I want loads of money. I'm a simple guy. Um, alhamdulillah, me and my wife we're happy with whatever we do, whatever we have. It's to have the freedom to provide. For my family and kids To give me free time and energy To give to my family inshallah And the future and kids mm -hmm. So that I could be around them And be around them with good energy and health Without you know spending so much time Becoming tired from working all the time mm -hmm. To be able to help as many people as I can Inshallah um, But yeah to be able to eventually When you say help as many people as you can, you mean in terms of this health? And health fit and fitness, yeah, mentorship, yeah. just help in any way. It doesn't have to be fitness. Yeah, I like yeah, helping yeah. people. Okay. But yeah, for me, the dream would just be to have the freedom to take care of and provide for my family fully while having the time to be there for my family also together. Yeah. So yeah, that, inshallah, that would be my dream. Very different that, than my old dream. Which was? It used to be, honestly, it was similar but it was to, um, you know, have the freedom to live in a country with nature, like, you know, like Thailand, oh, Bali, yeah, 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 somewhere yeah, yeah, where like, yeah, I can yeah. be in the beach and be around nature and have freedom yeah, yeah, of time yeah. also and have, you know, some financials coming in where I'm, you know, covered and taken care of. Yeah, yeah. Alhamdulillah, I'm a simple guy, though. I don't need a lot to be happy. Yeah. Like in terms of like survival, so like no materialistic stuff, so... That used to be my dream. Now it's the same dream, just with a family and kids, inshallah. Love that. Shout love, out, love, love that. All right. Well, uh, for anyone who's uh, tuned in, um, you can also have these conversations and many, many more. If you want to talk supplements, you want to talk recovery, you want to talk sleep, you want to talk weight loss, you want to talk nutrition, you can uh, find all of this on Obeast Coaching, I yeah. believe it is. Yeah, Obeastcoaching.com. Obeastcoaching.co. Dot .co. No, they, Obeastcoaching.co. Yeah. Obeastcoaching.co. Obeastcoaching on Instagram. All of them things there. Reach out to this man. He'll help Appreciate you out. It, man. When were you the most disappointed in yourself? Poor. Ah, uh, yeah. I think I know. I think the most disappointed. That's a hard question. <laughs> and yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, no, okay, I know. Because I was going between two things. Mm. Is in an individual and the other one's God. Okay. Is any time, this is my like, years I told you I was going a bit mm. mini mini. <laughs> mini mini. Any, right, any time I've done anything that's, um, we're not meant to, meant to do as, as Muslims, um, just a disappointing, disappointment in myself and the guilt and really feeling it, like, like feeling just disappointed in myself in front of God. Mm. Yeah. Okay. That's the biggest. Anytime I do anything really like haram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, like the disappointment in myself knowing that God's watching and that God's giving me stuff and I'm out here, you know, not yeah. doing what I'm supposed to do. Probably, yeah, that's the most disappointing thing. Though. Yeah, I think, I think I, I can definitely relate to that. Yeah, it's, sure it's, it's in the heart and I can't explain it, man. Like, it's, it's actually it's hard to even heart. speak about, you know. It's it's in my heart, and yeah. then but it's a blessing to have that because having that, you know, is, it means we have the ability to fix that too. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, God loves us coming back to Him, so hundred percent. It's a part of it. Love that. That's Next one. Deep stuff, man. How have your values changed from ten years ago? Oh, ten years, twenty-one, younger me. <laughs> 
Okay, things that have changed in me in terms of just general, like, is I don't let, you know, people define me with one thing, with what they see. Mm. Uh, back then, you know, I let that be, and I was like, yeah, this is me. Yeah. Whereas over the years, you know, everyone watching, like younger people, and yeah, yeah. Just even even people my age or older, uh, as you go through life, you learn more skills you have, you know more, you learn about more qualities you have, you learn more about your value, you learn things about yourself you might not know now. Facts. And um, yeah, if you're not letting people label you and put you in the box, um, and along the way, you'll learn this by yourself though. You have to go through it to learn it. You can't tell someone this. It's something yeah, yeah, you just yeah. have to learn yeah. along the way. With not to let someone box you into what they say you are or what yeah. they think you are. You could be and do anything if you if you put in the work and like look into it. So yeah, that'll be it. What is the thing you are most proud of in your life right now? Don't want to be mushy, man. Hey, man. Proud of? You can be. I got a couple. Go on. Obviously, myself. Like mm -hmm. I'm proud that. The last year, um, you know, I've taken on new responsibilities um, as a man, and alhamdulillah, like I've pushed through. Obviously, God's given me everything that He's given me, and being able to grow over the years and help people and like take on new responsibilities and you know, growing with life, and you know, I'm proud of myself. How do you take care of yourself? Ooh. Spend a lot of time. Okay, training this is something we didn't cover today, you know. Huh? There's something we didn't actually talk about. I spend a lot of time taking care of everyone else. This is why. This is why. This is why this question is. Uh, and that's a big thing. I feed off of uh, helping people, and I feed off of um, you know just being active mm -hmm. and doing stuff for others. Um, only recently I've learned you need to take some time out for yourself. Before, like. At times, honestly, one of my biggest things I do for myself, and I know I've been speaking a lot about this over the show, is uh, I try, not so much recently because I've been really busy. Mm. Uh, I've got a wedding coming up. So yeah, really yeah, yeah. Busy, but <laughs> is I used to take a lot more time out, which I should. It's not an excuse to you know just read Quran, um, pray, mm. pray more, read Quran, look up. You know, you know my like my connection with God, man, that keeps me. Sane and it keeps me other than the physical. There's a mental faith aspect. Yeah, yeah it yeah. keeps my heart, you know, peaceful and yeah. believing, you know. But then in a that, that's that's my form of self care. I used to read a lot. Uh, obviously, like the given is exercising, mm -hmm. and that's my time. That's where I'm on track with everything in life when I'm taking care of my health too. Last uh, one. Tell last me. Last one for you, bro. I'm sweating out. <laughs> Describe our brother in one word Sexy <laughs> Sexy guy That's two words Sexy guy Nah Fair man enough. listen Cause you we'll know what like, it, A lot we'll of people bro, a, lot, a, a lot of people think When I say like, These things or whatever Like It might come across as cocky Or like being Like loves himself too much I just do it in a jokey way Yeah 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 But yeah, yeah, yeah. Alhamdulillah like, Listen man yeah, I love man. myself hey, bro. I love fine, myself bro. man Sexy guy man. out here, funny guy out here. Hey, um, but no, nah, you know what? In one word, hey, I'll yeah. take sexy, bro. I'm not, I'm not discounting sexy at all. Oh, if you want to keep sexy, that's fine. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'll, take that. I'll take that as a second compliment today. <laughs> no, wait, go, no, bro. no, no, no. That's not my word, though. Wait, right, no, no, no. I'm deeper than I'm deeper than sexy. <laughs> okay, fine. Sexy is like how you look on the outside, superficial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got to be sound on the inside. Go on, uh, man. There he is. There he is. Question. Let me think. <laughs> How would I describe myself? Grateful. Love that. Grateful. Love that. Alhamdulillah. Always blessed. Grateful. If things aren't going your way, be grateful and God will make it go your way as long as you keep on moving. Just look at I had this conversation with one of our friends earlier. Um, you know, everyone goes through certain stresses in life sometimes. Mm. And when you look deeper into your situation most times, you have everything, you know, that anybody else would love to have. And, you know, you have everything you need. Yeah. So being grateful will get you a long way. We have a closing question on the show. Off the cards. 
No, without the cards. Khalas, the cards cool. are done. We're done with the yeah. game. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so for someone who, as we kind of talked about before, grew up, uh, was born in the UK, grew up in Qatar, spent some time in Egypt, has this culturally diverse um, upbringing slash identity. How has the word home changed for you and okay, developed cool. for you? I've spoken. We are, I think everyone out here and around the world spoken about this. Where's home? Yeah. I always say, home for me. Home for me is everywhere and nowhere. Okay. Like I always say, I'm. I belong everywhere and I belong nowhere. Yep. Like early on, I was saying, like a lot of people want be friends with me, but I don't feel like I fit in with them. But I do. Mm. So I feel like because of my background, anywhere I've gone in the world, I could, I could, I could, like a chameleon, like mm. fit in and make it my home. Because you've been forced to adapt to living in places that aren't home, so you can get along anywhere you go. Uh, where home is, though, as a physical place, anywhere in the world, but in a mental um, capacity, like yep. in, in a mental state, is wherever I feel at peace and... Wherever I can go and just feel comfortable, mm. right? And just not feel stressed or feel... Yeah. So it's a place where you can go where you feel relaxed, right? It's not really... You can live in a home and not feel like you're at home. A home isn't just the word. It's how you feel. Facts. Feeling at peace, feeling happy. Um, you know, that's definitely a blessing. And yeah, like I always say this with my wife. Now we could be... We could live anywhere in the world and it'll be home. Big facts. You know, as long as you're at peace, though, and preferably if it's physical, a country where there's no, um, you know, you know, like I always say when I go to Asia, like like I went to Bali last year and everybody there is grateful and happy with whatever yeah, they have. Yeah, yeah, Nobody yeah, yeah. fights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You automatically feel like you're at you peace. You feel that energy. You feel it. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah that's a, I, I belong everywhere. I belong nowhere. I, I could be anywhere and make it home, you mm. know, and obviously... Alhamdulillah, if you find the right person to be with, like in terms of relationship and you know, yeah. future, that can also be then, your home. then that's your home. Like for sure. Like you know, okay, this is um, some mushy stuff, right? <laughs> Going back to lo- like, the deeper stuff before talking about why I've always been out. Yeah, until late, come home with my when I start with my family, sleep, wake mm. up, repeat. Mm. Since I got married, it's the first time I think in my life. Let me guess. I, Let still, me guess. I, I used to love going home to my family's if there was nice dinner. But, <laughs> but it's different. When you're with your family, nah, you different. take it for granted it when is, you're younger. I, I 100% yeah. understand what you're saying, bro. But like, alhamdulillah, this year, it's been the first time I feel in my life, I finish work and I can't wait to go home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alhamdulillah, it's such yeah. a blessing. Apparently, and I say apparently because I haven't experienced this and I know you haven't yet either. Yeah. Apparently, when you have kids, it, that even gets even. I heard. Yeah. I heard. My yeah, friends yeah, yeah. all tell me when you have kids and you come home and you know they're gonna come running to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like, a, apparently that's a mad feeling as well. It's like yeah, like the love that I've been told you'll have for your kids. It's um, I, well, I don't know. Right we now. have a friend. Inshallah, we keep on moving and yes, uh, do the right things. And inshallah, inshallah, have it all in the future. My brother, our brother. Oh, thank you for this talk, man. It's been nice. This has been this has been this good. It's been great, man. This guy I, hits I you got... from every different angle, man. <laughs> I thought I was good, man. I was like, listen, I've hit all these questions good, and he put out his cards. <laughs> the Joker. <laughs> nah, man, they're good, man. It's a good game, but I nah, it, man. Was, honestly, man, keep up the amazing work with the podcast I appreciate and the people. You, bro. I appreciate Inshallah. you for coming on. Nah, I appreciate, appreciate you for you making the me. time. Thank you. As you, you, you were one of the first people that said, "I know I'm going to be early." So just bear in mind that I'm always early for everything and you actually were early. Listen, I'm always early, I appreciate man. it, bro. I was wondering too when I was coming out, I was like, listen, I'm probably going to get the 520. <laughs> I was like, but obviously first time I'm meeting you, I was yeah, like, yeah, but yeah. is the podcast going to start at 530? <laughs> or is it going to be like a 545, 6 p.m. Like, you know, Middle East kind of, <laughs> you know, them, let's meet 530 and then you meet at six instead. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm always, wherever I'm coming, 10, 15 minutes ahead. Respect people's time, man. Yeah, man, I appreciate that, I appreciate bro. And honestly, you even, me, even, even, like, just to kind of mirror that, I also am always like I was an I was prepared since four thirty, 
So what? Yeah, yeah. Listen, so man, if you said it. that, I would have been here for fifteen. We run a we run a tight ship out here. Oh, respect. Time's valuable. Hundred percent. Like, listen, 100%. people, respect other people's time. I don't want to waste yours, so please don't waste mine. That's what it is, man. We got stuff to do. So like, time's valuable. Like this time here has been valuable, but honestly, it's been you know time worth spending. You know, because mashallah, you're a good brother. So I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you having me, mashallah. I love that. To everyone that's tuned in. Hope you enjoyed this conversation. That's a wrap on episode 42. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you know when we next upload. And we out. Much love.